This video was sponsored by Audible, this week with a special offer for Prime Day. Hey, happy Friday. This week, Oppo and OnePlus announced that they're basically merging together, Intel reportedly wanted to buy a Sci-5, and we got our first unofficial glimpse at Windows 11. Never thought I'd see the day. We also have 20 brand new questions in our weekly tech knowledge quiz, get at least 15 of them right to receive an optional invite to my crowd app, and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my release highlights this week start with the Symphonisk picture frame speaker from IKEA and Sonos. This is a $200 smart speaker that blends into the decor and lets you swap the front plate for different art styles. Pretty cool. Then we have the Honor 50 series, which are the first real phones the brand has launched since it split from Huawei. The devices still look like Huawei phones, but they now come with Snapdragon chips and Google services, so I'm interested to see if they can claw their way back to success this way. And finally, the most upvoted product last week was Leica's first ever phone, the Lights Phone 1, which is a rebranded Sharp Aquos R6 with the same gigantic 1-inch sensor, except it now has a new paint job, a camera lens for some reason, and it costs the equivalent of 1,700 USD in Japan. All right. As always, to stay up to date with all the new gadgets, check out all of the latest releases in the Crowd app, where we add them almost in real time now, and be sure to upload your favorites at least once a week to help me pick a community favorite. Okay, and the first story of the week is OnePlus officially announcing that they're basically merging their product teams with Oppo. The two have shared a lot of resources in the past and officially merged into one company called Oplus a while ago, but the news here is that they will officially just have one team designing and building products under two different names going forward. This is unsurprising given that they already share a lot of hardware, given that OnePlus phones run ColorOS in China, and given that the next version of Oxygen OS will basically look exactly like Color OS as well. And the merger means that in the future, basically the only thing keeping these two apart is having two separate marketing teams. And you might wonder why BBK is keeping both brands around if that's the case. And here's my take. OnePlus started out as a brand aimed primarily at consumers outside of China, and from the beginning it was built to feel vaguely international. Partially because of that, it is the only Chinese brand that has managed to successfully enter the US market so far in a meaningful way. Well, technically there's also Motorola, but they were acquired, so that's kind of a different story. Anyway, OnePlus was a niche brand with only enthusiast flagships for a long time, so it didn't grow huge, but it has firmly established itself in key Western markets and built trust with consumers, tech reviewers, and also many key carriers, like T-Mobile in the US for example. That is a huge asset and it is incredibly difficult to replicate, especially for a company coming out of China. So I think BBK decided to basically keep this brand name and all of its fancy connections alive, use it as a sort of Trojan horse, but in the future essentially sell the entire Oppo portfolio through that name. The Oppo business is a much bigger business than just selling a couple of niche flagship phones on a budget, and it's a way for Oppo to enter markets like the US without having to build up trust from zero. And in the meanwhile, Realme has clearly taken the role that OnePlus once played, with its flagship killers such as the Realme GT that just launched globally and can be had for as little as 369 euros. So the BBK group still has all of their bases covered pretty smart. Okay, and my second story of the week will be Intel reportedly wanting to buy a company called Sci-5 for $2 billion to make the chips of the future. Now, if you want a full explainer on the chip industry, I've made a deep dive video that you can watch somewhere here, but to explain it as quickly as I can, Sci-5 is basically one of the leading companies designing so-called RISC-V chips. RISC-V is an up-and-coming chip architecture, much like ARM or Intel's own x86, but unlike those other two, RISC-V itself is open source, and there is a lot of interest in this maybe becoming the dominant chip architecture of the future. For now, RISC-V chips are pretty basic. There's one fitness band that uses one, and they are mostly used as maybe microcontrollers inside of things like storage units rather than big boy CPUs, but the rate of improvement for RISC-V chips is huge. Intel, of course, was hurt massively by missing the ARM revolution. It's a big reason why they lost the phone market, and it's a big reason why they're losing at least part of the desktop and the server market. So them shopping for something that theoretically in the future could challenge ARM makes a lot of sense. 
I think Intel at first could probably use RISC-V to build out a microcontroller business, or they could maybe include RISC-V modules inside their chips. After all, they've said that they're investing heavily into these modular designs that can mix and match various architectures together into one gigantic chip. And then, maybe a couple of years ahead, they could be ready to make actual dedicated RISC-V CPUs as well and take the lead from ARM. Whether it will happen, we don't know, but it will be exciting to watch. And the third story of the week is a build of Windows 11 leaking to the public. This is definitely not a finished build, so we'll have to hold our final judgments until the 24th of July, when Microsoft will officially announce the system, but we can already see a ton of changes. The start menu and the icons are centered by default and look exactly like what we've seen on Windows 10X before. The corners of apps are rounded now, there is a new multitasking menu, and generally it's a fresh coat of paint. Also, Zach from Windows Central has discovered that many of the animations, like window resizing for example, feel a lot more fluid, and animations in general have been polished a bit. I personally like how it looks, and as a nerd I can't wait to try it on my own machines of course, but I also can't help but feel that this, at least on the preview builds that we've received, doesn't appear to be much more than, you know, a fresh coat of paint. Nothing major appears to have changed in the fundamentals of Windows on like a technical and usability level, and I feel like such a big visual redesign without any significant usability improvements might serve mostly as a point of annoyance for people who aren't nerds and who will just have to relearn a system that to them will not do much more than the old one. Anyway, I'll wait for another week with my final judgments, if I can even call them that, and I hope Microsoft manages to surprise me positively. All right, that's it for this week's news, and for the weekend, I actually have a book tip for you. The Psychology of Money. I have just listened to it, and even as someone who studied business and finance, I thought this was a fantastically insightful listen. With a huge increase in the number of people who started investing in the last few years, and the rise of Reddit and meme stocks and whatnot filling up our news diet lately, I think listening to a calm classic like this is a brilliant way to tune out all of the noise and replace it with a fundamental understanding of how money and investments actually work and how they can work for you. The book is full of really interesting insights and examples that teach you how to think about money, and I, of course, listened to it on Audible, where you can actually get it for free with a 30-day Audible trial. Also, because of Prime Day, Amazon Prime members can now save 53% on four months of Audible for a limited time, bringing the price down to just $6.95 a month. That's a great deal. I use Audible before falling asleep, while in the shower, while cooking. It's a great way to learn something new and relax on the go, and a subscription gets you one credit for any audiobook you want from their huge library a month, plus free access to Audible original podcasts, guided fitness and meditation, and more. Check them out at audible.com slash fridaycheckout, or text fridaycheckout to 500-500, and I'll see you next Friday.